I wasn't expecting to have to make that decision, mm -hmm. but that's what that's what God's plan was. Mm -hmm. And when I had to choose between serving and keeping my corporate comfortable job, I chose to walk away from the comfort to serve my community. Hi everyone, this is Raina Creel with Purpose and Passion. I'm excited today because I have a alumni sister in the building from Emerge. But before we start this interview, I want you to like and subscribe and comment on Lux Media Studios, okay? You can find us on YouTube, baby. I have the lovely commissioner, Jennifer Williams. She is the commissioner of District 2 LA County Citizen Economy and Efficiency Commission and also a state Senate candidate for District 35. And she is my alumni sister with Emerge. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank <laughs> for you. Gracie Purpose yeah. and Passion on Lux Media Studios. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you for having me. This is awesome. Oh, well, I'm happy you're here because, you know, I support my, my sisters and positive things that they want to do in the world to make change, right? They always say sometimes, you know, people always say that, if you want to see change, you have to be first make the change in yourself yeah. to just see the change in the in the community, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, wow. So I want to I want you to take the viewers down memory lane, like where your parents are born and raised, mm -hmm. and where you born and raised. Sure. Um, thank you so much for having me. Like Welcome. I said, this is a beautiful space, yes. a beautiful place. Um, so yeah, I am born, I was born in this district in Willowbrook, uh, which is an unincorporated community. There's about a million unincorporated folks in yes. LA County that live in unincorporated communities in all of LA County. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't know that. So I was born in one in Willowbrook in Ujima Village, wow. uh, which is a community that unfortunately no longer exists. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I was born. My mother and my father were both raised in Compton, Willowbrook area, okay. born and raised. Um, they both graduated from Centennial High School. My grandparents and my cousins graduated from Centennial High School, but um, I wasn't raised in the district. Yes. Um, I My mom decided to move us out mm -hmm. of the district, of the community for seeking you know better opportunities yes of course more well-resourced public education yeah. you know because we know for a long time that LAUSD and surrounding communities just have not had the resources that we need for families to thrive right yeah. so she saw that early um she saw that herself coming up through um Compton Unified mm -hmm. and she was like she wanted something different for us so she moved us to Carlsbad California wow that's a nice area <laughs> it is a nice area it it's a world of difference from where I'm from yes Willowbrook uh, to over there <laughs> totally different <laughs> real different I mean Willowbrook you know is is a a really close tight-knit community um but Carlsbad not a lot of diversity right yes. like my school, my high school that I went to was about 4,000 students and there maybe were a handful of black students. Wow. So um, while we had proximity and gain proximity and access to a well-resourced public yes. school education, it came at a cost, a steep wow. cost. You know, we were away from our families. We also were in an environment we really couldn't afford to be in. Yeah. We really could not afford to be there. We wow. live below the poverty line for sure. Um, and that resulted in us, uh, you know, not always having everything that we needed. I remember being hungry many days in school. Yeah. I remember um, my mom had to drop me off at like 6.30 in the morning. Oh, I remember those days. Right, so that she could travel, yes. you know, down to San Diego for a minimum wage receptionist job, right? And mm. that we didn't have family who could drop me off, you know, yeah. when school actually started. I had to get there, you know, an hour before the school actually started mm -hmm. and then I would um I participated in band and in sports so I had band practice and I had a sports practice you know in the fall it was yeah. basketball in the spring it was track um and so I was at school from like 6 30 in the morning to like eight o'clock at night and the mm -hmm. food that I had to sustain me were the free 
breakfast and lunch. Mm -hmm. And you know, the portion sizes of those meals, I, all my public school education, I, you know, yes. participated in the free breakfast and lunch yeah. program. And the portion sizes never changed from- They sure did it. They did not change, <laughs> despite the fact that, you know, you're growing yeah. adolescent, your yes. hormones, you know. It's all the same packaging. It's the same packaging, <laughs> the blue burrito, right? The <laughs> blue packaged burrito. Be lucky to get an apple on the side and a juice or milk, one of That's those. That's right, yes. right. And so I, you know, didn't always have everything I needed, yes. but I'm so grateful for the sacrifice that my mom made. It was a sacrifice. Yes. Um, and it led to us falling into homelessness a couple of times. Mm. But- I was so aware of the sacrifice. Like we are here to take education. We were yes. there to take education really seriously. And so I did the best that I could to do that. Graduated, went to college on the East Coast. Wow, what college did you go to? <laughs> yeah. East Coast? I'm like, man, a West Coast girl going to the East Coast. It was <laughs> an experience, let me tell you. <laughs> People are like, why are you here? Wait, you're from LA? Like, you're from California? Like, people why? are trying to go to USC and UCLA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They're like, why are you here? We're trying to get over there. But I, I don't know. I just always had this desire to go to school on the East Coast. I don't know mm -hmm. why. And so I'm grateful that I actually had an opportunity to realize that dream. I went to yeah. Northeastern University okay. in Boston. Wow, Boston. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I and know that was different very different right. for in a multitude of different ways yes. uh demographically speaking it's really different it's diverse but it's a completely different set of yeah. diversity you know demographics um i was missing my mexican brothers and sisters <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> i was mix missing my mexican brothers yes. and sisters. i was like man there's not a lot of mexicans yeah. here like this is not my i'm not used to this you know yes. what i mean uh so that definitely took some getting used to and you. also for the first time in my life i was asked like what are you and i'm like by other black people i'm yeah. like what do you mean what am i I'm like no what are you are you dominican are you are you, you, you know, are you Trinidadian? Are you, I'm like, <laughs> an exotic look. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm just African. Black. I'm just I remember black. people says, I'm just black. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, yeah, right. I'm just black. And I didn't realize, um, you know, how the African American community, like African American community, yes. can be seen in, may be seen in a negative light by some folks. Mm -hmm. um, within the di black diaspora, the African diaspora. That was new to me. Yeah. That was new to me. And give me an example. Sure. So, well, it was more in how people responded to me telling mm -hmm. them that I was just black. It was just like a, oh, like a disappointment or. So they're waiting for you to say I'm Puerto Rican and black. <laughs> yeah. Something <laughs> not African-American. Yes. Um, and so that was. That was new. That was new. Yeah. And I, I just didn't realize that, you know, before going to that part of the country. To Boston. To Boston. And wow. then think about Boston is like the first, one of the first places uh, that slaves were brought into, into the country yes. on the transatlantic slave trade. Yes. So down the street from my university was Spaniel Hall where they would actually sell, sell the African people, slaves. Yeah. And so racism, right, is something that we know is an issue throughout the yes, whole country. It exists. Yes. It, it uh -huh. exists. It all is over a the world. All over the world. Yes. yes. Including Latin America. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. That's true, too. Yes. That's true. Um, white supremacy culture yes. is something that has permeated the whole globe. And anti-Blackness has, yes. has penetrated the whole globe. Uh, but to be in Boston, like, it's just a different vibe. Yeah, you know, like, definitely. it's... It's I can only imagine. sunk into the fibers of that area in a way that I just was not really prepared for. <laughs> <laughs> I was not prepared for that. How many years were you there in Boston? Six years. Oh my god! Yeah. So yeah, yeah you had to you had to eventually like kind of like grow into it, right? Into the community <laughs> of Boston or no? So, um, yeah, I was an years, RA because you know this was a private institution, mm -hmm. um, and it was very expensive. And one of the ways that I was able to make sure I could 
remain in yes. that institution was becoming a RA, a resident assistant. So I was blessed to be able to do that and remain on campus. And when you live on campus, it's sort of a buffer between um, the reality of mm-hmm. a city. I I feel, at least in my yeah. experience, you know, like I'm just working on campus. I'm, you know, in classes. So yeah. everything, my whole life is really on campus. That's how I feel about USC. Really? USC is the hood. We we laugh and say it's University of South Central because it's around surroundings is the hood. Right. But if you're just only in USC and you're in a dorm mm-hmm. or you in those little areas that everything is brick, it just looks like their own little community. A little village, so you don't right. get to go out to experience being robbed or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so when I see people at US, uh, USC, I'm just like, wow, it's a little community. And it's so different because most people don't get a chance to go out. You know right, I mean? right. Yeah. Um, so I was insulated. There you go. That's the word. In, yes. in by staying on campus and being part of the Res Life community. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I, you know, I didn't experience a lot of a lot of it until I graduated and then got my first apartment out into in Quincy, Massachusetts, yeah. really close to Boston. Uh, and then I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. And, you know, I was working, (laughs) right, it was the eye opener. I was working full time, right? Because Northeastern has like a co-op program. That's why I chose to go there. I wanted to make sure I was going to have a job. I wanted to make sure I was going to have a job, right? That was the whole point. Like, I just wanted stability in my life. And I wanted to go to whatever institution I could that was going to make sure I had a good paying job yes. so I could have stability for me and my family. Like I didn't do six years just just for fun. No. <laughs> I did six years for a good paying job. Exactly. And yes. actually I started off as a journalism major. Wow. And, you know, <laughs> I quickly switched majors because I was like, wait a second. We had folks from the Boston Globe, folks from CNN coming mm-hmm. and talking to us. And they were like, oh, when you graduate, you'll be lucky to make $20,000 a year. And I was like, can't do that. Yeah, I was like, "Um, this 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 ain't for me. I can't do that. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, back then you're like, can I make forty thousand a year? Back then, forty thousand, forty five, fifty. You were balling back then. You know what I mean? Back then you were balling. Right. But with twenty grand, like no, I was like, I was like, yeah, I need. And I watched a movie called Something New with Sanaa Lathan. It takes place here in L.A. Black woman. She is a single black woman, bought her own home on her wow. own in Baldwin Hills. And I'm watching this movie. I'm like, well, what does she do that she can afford to do that? Yeah. She was an accountant. So you became an accountant. Because of that movie, wow. I became an accountant. So a movie inspired you to become an accountant. That's right. That's Dang. right. Yeah. And seeing a black woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you're gonna make me go watch the movie. You should watch the movie. It's a good I movie. I am now. It's I am. Movie. I'm like, I want to see. Yeah, it's a really good movie. Um, and she, you know, in the movie, she's pursuing a love interest that's outside of her comfort zone, mm-hmm. and she's also trying to make partner at her firm. Yeah. At the same time, and she, you know, I don't want to spoil the movie for you, yes. but you should watch it. And I was like, wow, I want to do that work if mm-hmm. I can. That's the sort of job that will have a place for me as a mm-hmm. black woman and that will allow me to thrive mm-hmm. right to have everything that i need that's all i really want so now that we're we will go into um did you join emerge first before becoming commissioner yes okay so take take the viewers down the journey because you say you become a, an accountant right mm-hmm. how did emerge come about cuz how do you go from from <laughs> accountant to pretty much politics, you know what I mean? Like being a community leader. So tell me about Emerge. Yes, okay, so how did I get into Emerge? And how you met me, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so um, I became a certified public accountant. You know, not just an accountant, but a certified public accountant Mm -hmm. because that certification would give me the economic freedom to do what I needed to do what was best for me and not be tied to any one employer. Mm -hmm. So important. Having that mobility and that flexibility and that freedom, economic freedom, Mm -hmm. that's what the certification did. And that's why I wanted to make sure I got that. So I got that. Then I started working um, in the industry at one of the major firms, 
Price Waterhouse Coopers, wow. one of the big four yeah. public accounting firms. Uh, and I became a financial statement auditor. And I was attracted to that mm. because it all it was all about even with audits is cool. <laughs> You're the first person to say that. Hey, you want to feed me and I'll give you a good uh, good <laughs> a good review. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just joking. I can never take audit jobs again. Okay? <laughs> no, it was I was attracted to it because it was all about transparency and accountability. Yeah. And we need more of that in corporate America. Yes. And I wanted to do that work. Within, within, you know, public yeah. accounting. And so did that for eight years. Then in 2020, we know what happened. Mm -hmm. George Floyd was murdered. Brianna yeah. Taylor was murdered. Everything Amaya went down. Arbery, yeah. yeah. What people call the racial reckoning, as they say, yeah. in 2020, which, you know, I take issue with that. But, yeah. you know, all of these atrocities that were so mm -hmm. racially motivated all took place in 2020. And so PwC and 100 other companies started a racial equity fellowship wow. specifically focused on improving the quality of life for Black Americans and everyone, yes, but yes, specifically yes. for Black Americans. Yeah. And I just felt this pull, the Holy Spirit. I'm a woman of yes, God. Woman I'm of God. a Amen. follower and believer mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ. And I felt this pull. God was like, you need to apply. Like, this is for you to yeah. apply to. And I was like, oof, are you sure? Are you sure? sure? Because I knew if I applied, I was going to get in. And I knew if I got in that I had no idea what was going to come after. Mm -hmm. So I knew this was like a huge step of faith. Mm -hmm. And I had just been promoted to manager. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm the, hitting the, the, my stride. The, the, the energy is feeling good. In and alignment. then this opportunity yes. comes which would take me out of client service work, mm -hmm. but it would put me into more of a purpose-driven work. Yeah. And so I prayed about it a lot, and I felt like, yes, like this is for me to apply. Applied, and I got in. There are 430 people who applied to this, and I was one of 30 people who got selected. What a blessing. It was a blessing. That's how you know that it, like things like experiences like that, it just makes you know it's a confirmation that you were meant to be a part of the organization and to continue your calling. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's powerful. So what do you love about Emerge? Shout outs to Emerge California. Uh, yeah, shout out to Emerge. <laughs> now, I, you know, I had heard of Emerge, but then while I was in the fellowship, people, three people in the same week asked me if I would ever consider running for office one day. And I was like, mm, three people in the same week. I'm like, okay, that's that's not a coincidence. No, that's, it's not because it's for me and our culture is three is a confirmation. Right. Exactly. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right. Yes. <laughs> so then I applied to emerge mm -hmm. because I was like, well, I don't know if I'll ever actually run for office, yes, yes, yes. but I'll learn what it would take. I'm all about yes. arming ourselves with knowledge as much as we can yes. to prepare ourselves. For I agree. You don't know what, what the you know what the future holds for us. You know exactly. I mean? So it's like you're learning, you're educating yourself, you're empowering yourself, you're teaching awareness within going through the course and also being able to experience it. And then for the next people that come behind you saying, I want to run for office. I want to become a commissioner. I want to become a law enforcement. I want to become a judge or a, a school board. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, join, join, join Emerge because blah, 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 blah. Right, yeah. right. And I'll be able to, to pass that mm -hmm. knowledge on to them. So I applied, got in, mm -hmm. and uh, it was six, you know, six months program. And the very first session in January, Close the Gap California oh, yeah. speaks and, you know, Close the Gap California seeking to close the gender gap in our state yeah. legislature because we are not at gender parity. Yes. We have more than 50 percent of women in California. We only have 42 percent of women in the California legislature. Mm -hmm. We need to close that gap. Mm -hmm. We need to close that gap. So that's what the organization seeks to do. And they were like, well, you know. Senate District 35 is an open seat, and we are yeah. trying to recruit women to run for this seat. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, okay, that's that's interesting, but I didn't necessarily but, like. But oh, before I need the to. District 35, how did you become a commissioner? So, so <laughs> while while I was in Emerge, uh -huh. while I was still in this public policy fellowship. I also joined LAPI, the LA African American Women's Public Policy Institute, mm, okay. four month program. So I was doing both at the same time. A little oh, lot. You're a little gangster. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Um, some might say that, but. <laughs> and that is when I, there was a class on becoming a commissioner. Believing Before Seeing, a new bestseller by Candace Barr. Order your copy today. And we learned in La Pie, there was a clash about becoming a commissioner. So around April, I'm like, huh, interesting. Uh, after that class about becoming a commissioner, um, then state Senator Sidney Kamlager Dove mm -hmm. was launching her congressional campaign at a park. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I'll go, I'll go to the, I'll go to her, you know, mm -hmm. campaign yeah. kickoff mm -hmm. after the class. Well, Supervisor Holly Mitchell was there. Okay. And I asked the class leader, uh, Miss Joy Atkinson, if she would introduce me to Supervisor Mitchell because I decided I wanted to be a commissioner. Mm -hmm. I live in an unincorporated community yeah. so of Westmont. And so there aren't a lot of opportunities for me mm -hmm. to get involved and advocate. Um, we don't have a neighborhood council and we clearly don't have a city council. Yeah, correct. So being a commissioner, it's one the of the few. Thing, right? It's the closest thing yeah, to it. Right. Like it's I'm the sheriff, serve. I'm the mayor, I'm the council member. No, like... <laughs> no. but I wanted to help. I wanted to to really, uh, you know, ride for my unincorporated community, yes. make sure that we had a presence, right? Yes. Uh, and so I was introduced to Supervisor Mitchell, and I said, "Hello, Supervisor Mitchell. I am interested in being a commissioner. I am. I live in your district." I'm from an unincorporated community. I'm a CPA and I would love to join one of your commissions. Wow. And she gave me the number of who in her office is running that mm -hmm. process. But I did my homework too. Yeah. I went to her website to see what are the vacancies and what sort of expertise do I have that would fit where there are vacancies. Yeah. And the Citizens Economy and Efficiency Commission is has been around for a long time. And what we do on that commission is we review different processes and procedures. For example, most recently, we um, looked at the uh, work from home, mm -hmm. um, return to work policies of the county and made recommendations on how they can improve it. Um, and it's all about improving the economy and efficiency, saving yeah. the county money and making sure yeah, that- yeah working from home and then kind of going into the office. You know what I mean? Right. That makes hybrid uh -huh. it, it situation. Makes it makes sense. Right. Right. Exactly. But there wasn't any, there hasn't been any consistency on how that policy has been laid out. Uh -huh. So the commission created a set of policy recommendations on how to provide more consistency. Yeah. Right. And make sure it's easier for people to roll out um, across departments. So that's an example of what we do. Well, as an auditor, I review policies of companies, yes. of organ nonprofit organizations, Fortune 500 companies. So this is a skill set I have, expertise that I have, mm -hmm. I've developed for eight years, and it fit the work of what that commission does. Yeah. And so I, you know, had my uh, interview, shared why I wanted to be a commissioner, mm -hmm. uh, and was appointed. Didn't that feel good though? It felt great. I'm like, wow. Wow. It, it feels good because it's like, you know, it's 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 in a important moment, especially being a part of a community and knowing that you have some kind of leadership, you right. know what I mean, to help your community. Right. Like me, I'm born and raised in Inglewood, but an incorporated area that I have love for is Lenox. Mm -hmm. And so in my head, I'm all like, man, you know, when I was running for office, all I wanted to do was to try to take that bridge and build it together where any resources I get in Inglewood, I can share that resource in Lenox because mm -hmm. they're right next door to each right, other, you know? Right. And then a lot of people in that community tell me like they felt, they feel like um, abandoned. Like they feel they're not good enough to be Hawthorne. They, they don't feel good enough to be Inglewood. So they're just in their own little limbo. And so when I heard that, I was like, man, like I would love to create unity and, and do something at Linux Park or mm -hmm. Linux Library, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that is awesome. So then obviously, you know, you're commissioner uh, for District 2 and District 2, you said it's Westmont, right? District 2 of LA County? Yeah, explain includes, that to the viewers. Yeah. Oh, it's 
pretty vast, right? It's mm-hmm. all of the communities that supervisor Holly Mitchell being the district two. Will it supervisor. be Linux too? Linux is included, ah, yes. Okay. <laughs> Manhattan Beach. Um, it includes Carson, Compton, includes wow. like unincorporated communities, Inglewood, um, all of these areas. There's like wow. a lot of different areas. Okay. Florence and Firestones, another unincorporated yes. community that is included. Westmont, West Athens, yes, right? I Eastern West Rancho mm-hmm. Dominguez. Yes. So that's a big area. It's wow. a huge area. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So then now that it is a big area for District 2, can you share with the viewers uh, what is a state senate and what is District 35? Sure. Yeah. So state <laughs> senator. So, right, I think in school we tend to focus a lot on federal government a lot yes uh Um, and you know we have the you know the three branches the judicial the the executive branch the president Mm -hmm. right and we have the legislative branch the house and the um, senate right Mm -hmm. and federal level so every state also has a legislative branch Mm -hmm. has all of those three branches actually um and so for the state of california a state senator is similar to the senator, uh, you know, federally. It's just for the state of California. Yes, there are um, forty state senators in the state of California, wow. with constituents of about a million people in each state senate district, which is larger than the c- congressional district. Wow. Yes, there are a lot of folks, <laughs> and wow. so uh, with redistricting, you know, things mm-hmm. have changed. State Senate District 35 used to include Torrance, and mm-hmm. now um, it really doesn't include much of Torrance at all. Oh, yes. Please pull um, your notes out because I sure that. want to know. <laughs> I have a We're going to inform and educate and teach awareness today on purpose and passion. This is nice. what the State Senate District looks like now. So you can see we have LAX yes. is in District 35. Which is Westchester area, right? Right. We have Inglewood, Lenox, Hawthorne, Lawndale. The, this yellow right here is the, is Gardena, but it's only the northern half of Gardena, mm. separated by Rosecrans. We have West Athens, Westmont, that's where I live. A little bit of Watts. Right, we have Watts, we have Willowbrook, Compton, Carson, West Carson, another unincorporated community. And then so we have Watts, Harbor Gateway, Harbor City, Wilmington, San Pedro. All of this is State wow. Senate District 35. Sheesh. It's huge. So my so my job is to make sure um, I take a picture of that with my cell phone so I can contact my Londell people and yes. Inglewood people and my Watson Compton and Willowbrook. I got a lot of people in Willowbrook as well and a few in Westchester. Mm-hmm. Carson, maybe my Polynesian people. Yes. Yeah, I got Polynesian right. people in there. And then Wilmington, the Latinos over there. So... I definitely will be doing my work of sharing and texting them, like, please vote for my friend. Thank you. You know, when people really vote when they're like, it's my friend. Right. <laughs> like, right. Okay, I got, I got her. I got her. I'm going to vote for her because <laughs> she's your friend. And I trust that you're making the right decision. Right. Yes. yes and yes. I know I'm making the right decision for you um, to become state senate for District 35 is because I was sharing with my friend yesterday that, you know, sometimes politicians are so have been in their position so long or just in politics in general for so long that they have uh, commitments with corporations right Mm -hmm. and in extra ties to you know people with money in general and they've made promises Mm -hmm. so sometimes these politicians have to go complete those promises Mm -hmm. um, versus focusing on the community Mm. And so for me, I'm like, I think of it like fresh meat, right? Like a vampire, like we need new blood. <laughs> and so for me, I'm just like, Jennifer is the right person because you're new to this. Your heart is in a good place. Uh, when I went to like the Willowbrook event, I was happy to see you there. You know what I mean? I was happy to see you there because you're a light. Mm. You know what I mean? Like a, a beacon of light. Mm. When I see you, I see that beautiful smile, that Beautiful hair. As you you know it's Jennifer. Jennifer just walked in the building. Now if you flat on your hair, we're gonna be like, where's Jennifer? Right. No, no, no. <laughs> where's Jennifer? At? And so, you know, I know where your heart is at. And um, and one thing about having the gift of discern discernment is knowing that when God tells you 
that is a person you can trust. Mm. And so that's how I feel about you. Yes, you're my emerge sister, but you're also a woman about the community, about the people. And that's what we need in our office because that's a big seat to fill because I know yes. who's running it now and right. not everybody's too happy with him, you know? So, <laughs> um, so yeah, obviously he's stepping away. He's terming out. Terming out. Yes. We now have 12 mm. year term limits. Oh, wow. 12 years. 12 years. Um, across the assembly and across yeah. the Senate. Um, and so that's, that's what's happening. He's terming out. So this is an open seat and an opportunity to have new, fresh perspective in Sacramento. Okay. Um, before I go into the spill of why people should vote for you um, in your district, mm -hmm. the, the question I will ask before that is, um, do you have any events that you would like um, to share with our viewers? Yeah. And when is the the important date to vote for you. Yes, okay. thank you. So <laughs> I'll start with that. So yeah. we have a primary, a March primary in California, mm -hmm. uh, March 5th. Every el presidential election year, instead of having our primary in June in California, mm -hmm. we have our primary pushed up to March. Okay. So March 5th is the date, is the election date for the primary. And we have um, a top two primary mm -hmm. where uh, it's not based on what party you're in, it's just the top two vote getters will yes. go through to the November general. So March 5th, uh, anyone who lives in these communities in District 35, you have an opportunity to vote for me, Jennifer Trishel Marie Williams. You hey. will see my whole name on the ballot. <laughs> yeah, <literally. laughs> my whole name on the ballot. Uh, and you will, everyone will get, because we live in California, we're blessed to be able to vote by mail. Mm. So everyone will get a ballot mailed to them in the first week of February. But we can vote in person. You right? can vote in person, absolutely. Okay. Because I like voting in person because I like to film it and be like, look, my girl Jennifer, we're going to vote for Jennifer. You know what I mean? I like doing that little extra stuff because I love to to share those moments because it's important. I remember when, you know, our ancestors couldn't vote at all. That's right. So I always tell people, like, you know, people say, like, it was this negative guy. And I wasn't trying to, I was not trying to be funny, but not sarcastic, but I was in between all of it, nosy and being funny and sarcastic. And I guess in Inglewood, they have a new gym coming out and mm. it's obviously they're like, it's going to be expensive. Right. Mm. And so I asked, uh, how much is it monthly? And then one Inglewood resident says, I'm not voting for you. And so for me, I'm just more like, well, I'm not running for office right now, but I will say this, you don't have to vote for me. Mm -hmm. But as long as you vote, your, That's your voice right. matters. Just use your voice. Yeah, your voice matters. You don't have to vote for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It ain't going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not going to hurt me because if it's meant for me to it's be mayor, me. it's meant for me. And if it's not, it's not. And it's okay. Either way, it doesn't hurt me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In my spirit. You yeah. Know what I mean? no, yeah. And so, um, so I think about, you know, about like, you know, going in person, supporting and voting. But by mail is fine too. You know yeah, I mean? by mail is. Some is, people just want to do it and just drop it. Yeah, and you don't know. There's can be a whole host of issues yeah. that pop up that prevent you from getting to the ballot box yes. on election day. But yeah, you have the option of voting by mail or in person, March fifth. Mm -hmm. March fifth. March fifth. In terms of events, yes. So <laughs> my campaign, we are the grassroots campaign in this race. But you guys working it though. We are oh working my, no, hard. You guys are working it like man. <laughs> We're working extremely hard. And so we are powered by the people for real, yeah. um, by volunteer efforts. Um, and so our in-person events, uh, we have virtual and in-person events. Mm -hmm. We have phone banking Mondays through Thursdays. Mm -hmm. uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays is from 6 to 8. And on Tuesdays, it's from 4 to 6. Virtual, you can do it from, the, from your couch, y'all. You can yes. be in your comfy pajamas and still contribute to the campaign. Uh, and then we have in-person phone banks that are um, on Saturdays and Sundays between now and election day. Mm -hmm. All of these things, you can go to my link tree in the bio section of my Instagram page, which is at JTM Will, W-I-L-L. -L. That is my Instagram page. You can go to the bio, click on the link tree, and you can sign up in one place for all of the events that suit your schedule, that work for you. Another event that mm -hmm. we're having is Monday, um, January 29th. The Black Parents Network is hosting a meet and greet specific for parents. This mm -hmm. is 
parents are important, right? They're of advocates for, for their children, for the future. And so there's a meet and greet happening Monday, January 29th from 7 to 8 30. You can also register what in city? that link tree. Um, it's going to be actually, I don't, I think it's in, it's virtual actually. Okay, I think. Okay, yeah, virtual. it's virtual. Okay. It's virtual. You can sign up for, for the Zoom. Um, yeah. And then the, the, our first in person phone bank is in Carson. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Sunday the 27th from 2 to 4 and again you can all sign up for all these things in the same place in the link tree in the bio of my Instagram page JTM Will so why should people vote for you JT? why should people vote for me well I number one I am running to serve and not be served Amen. that is an important distinction me running this has been a sacrifice I left my corporate job to serve my community as a commissioner. I wasn't expecting to have to make that decision, but that's what that's what God's plan was. Mm-hmm. And when I had to choose between serving and keeping my corporate comfortable job, I chose to walk away from the comfort to serve my community. Yeah. That in alone speaks volumes, I hope of where my heart really is. Mm-hmm. It's to serve, not to be served. I'm mm-hmm. not looking for a paycheck. I don't need to do this for the money. Yeah. I am doing this to serve. That's number one. Number two, <laughs> <laughs> I believe that my campaign represents equitable representation far more than any of the other candidates mm-hmm. in a multitude of different ways. We look at equitable representation, there's different um, intersections of diversity, right? Yes. Not just women it's important this seat hasn't been held by a woman in over 20 years and that wow, needs to change wow yeah that needs to change so you need to be the second woman true <laughs> in that position you know what i mean that needs to change so oh, there's yeah. that we don't have enough um young parents parents of young children mm-hmm. in government i am a mother of a four-year-old daughter yeah. right and so that's a really important perspective to have in our government yeah, when I we're agree. designing policies Third, I'm 34 years old. We definitely don't have uh, younger folks, enough younger pers- yeah, and perspectives need, in government. And we need that. We, we do. We need that. So we, we need youth. <laughs> yes, we do. We do. Well, we need that. In California, 40% of California's electorate is under the age of 40. Yes. But that's not reflected in our leadership. And it should be reflected in our leadership. I agree. It should I definitely be. agree. And, and I'm also a resident of an unincorporated community. Mm. So much, so too often, the needs of unincorporated communities go unaddressed. And we, our first line of defense is the LA County Board of Supervisors, mm-hmm. who is governing 10 million different people. So it's hard when you only have five people governing 10 million folks. Mm. It's hard when you're living in an unincorporated community to get what you need. That is extremely important perspective to have in Sacramento. Yeah. And I'm a CPA. I'm not <laughs> a knows about the money. <laughs> we, I know about the money. Yes. And guess what? Unfortunately, we're facing a $38 billion budget deficit next year. Oh, my goodness. And we need help with that. <laughs> and I, if it were me, I would vote for a CPA to help yes, us to help with get that, out right? of that negative. Oh exactly. My and so these are, we don't need another career politician. No, There's enough don't. of that in Sacramento. Yes, no, we don't. We need folks with diverse perspectives. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so i that's what I offer. That's what I bring to the table. Plus the values of my campaign, the yes. mission of the campaign. Those are all things that I believe are worth voting for. The mission of the campaign mm-hmm. is to transform lives and renew a sense of love and collective responsibility Aww. in society. That is the Jennifer. mission. Well, before we close off, what is your purpose and passion? My purpose and passion is to do the will of the Lord, to serve him and his people. That is what I was created to do. Um, And I believe if we all tap into our purpose and passion, this world Mm -hmm. will be such a better place. Man, how can our viewers find you on social media again? You can find me uh, on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, My Instagram handle is at JTMWill, W-I-L-L. Um, on Facebook, it's also Jennifer Williams for State Senate. Um, you can also go to my website, which is Jennifer, J E N N I F E R, the numeric number four, senate.com. Wow. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm proud of you. 
Thank you. I'm very proud of you. I'm happy that you're here gracing purpose and passion on Lux Media Studio. I just want to say I'm inspired by you. Thank you. I love the fact that you're following your dreams and you go for it and I'll be praying for you. Thank right? you so much. Rena. Well, this is Raina Creole signing out. Once again, shout out to Emerge, California. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. Bye. <laughs> All right. Yay. Yay. High five. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that was good. Yeah, it was.